So today we're going back to a hardcore old school Diana Wildstad aquarium. This is like ultra low tech. There's like nothing in a tank at all. There's no filter. There's just plants and soil and gravel, fish and water. And then light coming in, yeah. And this right here is the tank that we're gonna be using. It's 60 centimeters by 30 by 30. I think that's about, I think that's about 54 liters, something like that. Anyway, it's a good size tank for a Wildstad aquarium. You know, normally they're like nanos, kind of like this one. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking forward to doing it. But the first thing we need to do is get our substrate in. A nutrient rich layer that's gonna make our plants grow like crazy. Because that is the absolute key to the success of these tanks get those nutrients in, cap it off, get the plants in. The plants grow absolutely brilliantly. And then you've got oxygenated water, the fish are healthy. You're feeding the fish, the fish are pooping, the poop goes back into the soil and it goes round and round and everything is harmonious. First thing though, I need to go to my local garden center and get some soil. Okay, so I'm pretty sure this is the one I want. Top soil, uh, yeah. <laughs> top soil is the one because I mean compost or potting soil it's got added nutrients and that kind of thing this is just stuff that you use for bulking up it's not add added nutrients and that we don't want too many nutrients or it'll just be an algae bomb this should be just the right amount so we've got the soil but I'm pretty sure there's going to be like bits of organic matter in there like bits of bark and stuff that needs sieving out so I also bought inside here is a set of sieves and a diggy thingy. Uh, <laughs> so they've got different gradings. I'll get it out properly. I think these pop up, that's it. So it's got an outer rim. I'll leave a link for this for anyone interested because I thought it was pretty good. All really good quality stainless, look. And each one is a different grading. I'm not sure which, which one we're gonna want yet, but I'll go with the middle one to start with. Slide it in the top. Do we slide it in the top? Nope, Just slide it in the so I don't, oh there we go, it's actually a lot easier than I thought. You just put it right in one corner and then it goes. So then I'm guessing we can just put it over a bucket, will it fit? Yeah, kind of, good enough, ain't going anywhere. And then we have our lovely trowel. <laughs> well this is going to be satisfying isn't it? Super clean, stainless. <laughs> kind of wasted on me because I will never clean that ever. <laughs> right, I was going to just cut it there and then I realised I'm going to have to keep it flat all the time so turn it up. I'm going to make such a mess aren't I? <laughs> there we go. Oh, I don't even think I need this sieve looking at this. Might as well pass it. Oh yeah, yeah, there's some, there's some chunks in there, there's some stones so it was a very good idea in the end. Oh, I can already tell this is good dirt. We don't say dirt in this country, really. We say soil or mud. <laughs> okay, I think that should be enough. So it's quite sandy, but there's definitely a lot of nutrients in there as well. I think it's a mixture of everything. It's like sand, a bit of clay in there. Topsoil. Whoops. Okay, there we go. Look, it's some coarser bits of gravel and bits of wood still in there, uh, still been caught, look. So it was a good idea to sieve it. And we can now take that soil and put it into the tank. So it's now time to put the soil in. I've got this little pot because my gap at the top, oh, that was my watch, it's not very big. I'm just gonna sprinkle it everywhere, evenly to start with. I don't actually think I've got enough here, to be honest. I might need to make some more, but that's fine. We can do that. Now some people are going to want to create a border around the edge so you can't see the soil, but I think it might be quite interesting to see that layer, mightn't it, and just see all the roots and that growing into it. So I'm going to keep that on show. Now I'm just going to even it out a bit so it looks somewhat level. I'm not too worried though because it's all going to get capped over with. Now I've read some places saying it might be a good idea to spray this down now, so that's what I'm going to do. I can't tell you why exactly, maybe it's to make sure that it removes some of the air pockets if there are any. I'm just going to do it anyway because it won't hurt, will it? Or maybe it will hurt and this is a bad idea. Let me know in the comments. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, there we go. That is looking nice and moist. Now to go on top of all of that, I've got this bucket down here. It's just a complete mixture of stuff I've collected of old sort of scapes and it's, it's got a bit of everything in it really. I could remove the bigger bits of gravel, but I think they'll add some sort of realness to it. I think they'll look quite good. Mostly it's finer sand anyway, look. Here we go, I'm just gonna pile it in. Actually looks really, really natural, doesn't it? Oh, that stuff looks great. Oh, it's gonna look good. Now I need to make sure I've got a good inch to an inch and a half of this because I've got at least half an inch of soil there. And from what I've read everywhere, we need double the thickness of capping to the, uh, the amount of soil, just to make sure it doesn't leach through. So at the moment, we've got nowhere near enough. <laughs> just need to get on with this, then I just chuck it in. There we go, we should have a substrate system done, ready to go. It's hard to pick up. Oh, there we go. So you can see the soil layer and you can see the gravel layer. And I think that's gonna be really interesting later on. I'm gonna spray all of this down now so the water's soaked into everything. Now again, I'm not even sure if I need to be spraying this down or if I could just fill it up, but it can't hurt, right? Lovely colors on the gravel there, look, real variation, I like that. I always find though, if you do spray down gravels and hardscapes, not fully clean them, like who's got time for that? Who's got time to sit and wash them? But if you actually spray them down like this, you'll get less misting when you first sort of start the tank up. And by start it up, I mean fill it up. I don't know why I said start it up. <laughs> right, we're looking good. I just want to cap off some of that even more now with an even finer sand, just to make sure that everything's locked down. Down here, look, this is the sand I've got. So you can see that grain size, much smaller than what we've already got in there. Yeah, I don't need a lot of this, look. I'm just, just sort of filling in the gaps, if you like. I'm also lightening it up a bit, aren't I? So hopefully that'll add a bit more light for the plants and they'll grow even better. Now, ultimately, I think I've made that look way more complicated than I need to. Get your soil down, get some sand and gravel over the top, make it doubly as thick as the soil. That's <laughs> what we really need to do, isn't it? Now we can start putting some hardscape in. Now I want predominantly plants in this. It is a well stat aquarium, which means that you go for mostly plant life. Um, but I want to do a little bit of design, you know? Something that doesn't take up a lot of space, but is a bit of interest. Yeah, literally for the scape, I just want a few rocks not taking up too much surface. You know, like the, the footprint is small there. Maybe a couple back here. Quite like the look of that. Maybe a smaller one as well. And I've got a few pieces of manzanita. Again, I've picked this because it can sit off the, off the sand look. Just like, I don't know. I'm not going for anything spectacular here, just a, a little bit of a point of interest. There we go, pretty dull, right? But if we glue all that together, so it's like kind of one big piece, just plant all around it. It's just little things for some fish to swim in out of, an eye to catch, but not so much that it's taken over the tank. So yeah, as always, you just want to choose some contact points like there. Oh, well, that didn't go to plan. Anyway, put the glue on, the blob. I think you can see that, yeah. I'll lift that back up and we can uh, attempt to do it exactly the same. There we go, might be worth putting a little stone on that back there just while it's gluing. There we go, full contact now. I'm also just adding a little bit more height to that back area, just because I've got some crypts that I want to put, want to put back there. They've got some big roots on them. I want to make sure that they're not just sat in the dirt and are actually in the sand, and then the roots make their way down to the soil. That's what we want. Cap it over again with a bit more sand. So much rinsing today. I don't normally rinse everything this much, but you know, why not? So you can see there, I've actually used that piece of wood that I laid back as like a little retaining wall. And um, it's actually much higher that side of it than it is here. I think it'll work well though for adding a higher platform for the crypts, I've got big crypts. The first two plants I wanna put in though is hair grass and Helanthium tenellum green. This is the Tropica one, two grow stuff. It's really, really good. And I haven't, I haven't got a huge amount there, have I? But you'll be surprised how far that spreads. I just want little details of it, really. I don't want it to be like full carpeting or anything like that to start with. We want to see it grow in, don't we? So yeah, just a few tufts of hair grass just dotted about here and there. Remember, I'm only planting into the sand. And um, in fact, I might want a bit more water in here because 
It's making holes in the sand rather than gripping it. Yeah, fill it up a bit. That's all the hair grass and helanthium tenelum green that I want to put in here. I might put some more later, just see how it looks, but let's keep it moving, let's keep, let's keep the flow going. Uh, Crips next. Right, that is all the little fiddly foreground plants in, I think it's looking great. The reason I um, do it like this is because if you try and plant them when it's full of water, like they keep floating up. So if you do it just with a little bit of water or even none at all, if you want, um, then they stay down. But we're gonna move on now to some, some more bigger, taller plants, background plants. And for that, I'm gonna fill the whole thing up and just take my time with it. Uh, you can see how they're sitting in the water better then. If I put it all in now, I've flopped over. It just kind of looks weird when you fill it up. Now we need to be extra, extra slow when we're filling this up. You cannot break, well you can, but you wouldn't want to. You wouldn't want to break this barrier, which you can't see. Come on, you wouldn't want to get this soil down there coming right up into the top, because it's just going to just put so much organics, floating organics, into the water column, and you'd be forever trying to get that out. <laughs> it's a real high chance of algae coming then, so really, really slow. In fact, what I like to do is just put a little bit of a uh, filter foam into the corner and then just rest in a minute you'll see but just just rest the actual uh, hose onto that bit and it should be okay still need to go slow though there we go that's about as fast as i'm going to fill this up it'll take a while but it's worth the wait looking great look at that I told you crystal clear if you just take your time with it um, I also topped up this tank which again has got no filter in um, it's predominantly dwarf sag though and it's home to some of my awesome axle rod resporers there which are actually going to move across potentially into this tank with some others as well because um, I want to do a bigger version of this um, in here now I've also got a lot of duckweed on top and I took some of your advice and I got a comb like you said which actually works really well look at this brings it forwards and you just do that it picks them up why didn't i have this years ago my goodness anyway it's supposed to be about this tank um we're planting more now it's going to keep it going crips a little bit of the sag not too much because it takes over rotalas ludwigias uh hygrophilas all of it i'm just going to get it all in there now you can talk about it afterwards because i've got a lot planned a lot of plants to, oh, so many what I'm talking about look the planting looks so good we're not done we're not done by a long shot we've still got that big void in the back area there nice good amount of plants can come in this section a few more scattered around the foreground maybe maybe not though we can, you know we can leave that to sort of grow into but I like the detail of mixed plants just a few sprigs of each I just think that looks so wild and natural and I love it and then you just got all the different textures as well then you've got that sad shooting up it's so good right little peaks coming through with the rotala rotunda folia there that is rotala rotunda folia by the way it's just pink because it's been close to the light in another tank if it was the h right it'd be like bright red but yeah i'm just gonna keep going now oh it's gonna look so good oh before i do i just want to show you my uh rocky mountain scape here green very green the whole tank was green and i just left it and left it and let it settle and now there's just a green on the rocks but the shrimp are doing so good there's tons of babies there's tons of buried i've just put some food down here for them you see the snails now they're all just there you go look right behind it finding their eggs and there's, just, there's loads of them like that as well so this tank is taken off i've got a feeling it's going to be one of the most successful uh, shrimp tanks i've ever made to be honest all the grass is growing in great as well if i come to the side here 
um, and this is partly the reason why. <laughs> if I look, zoom in there, look at that rooting. It's doing it so well. Oh, the grass looks so good. Everything in this tank, and I've not cleaned it once. <laughs> I mean, the green to some people won't like it, but it's so good for all the shrimp in there. Anyway, yeah, carrying on <laughs> with the build. I get distracted so much, I'm sorry. So it's now actually the next day, and you're probably wondering why I didn't put any floating plants in. Well, I like to give a tank 24 hours just to let the plants sort of grow upright, follow, you know, go to where the light is on this tank, because in the previous tank they were tucked under and whatever. But they're all standing up right now and looking good. The tank has changed though in those 24 hours. So yeah, as you can see, the, uh, the plants are all looking good. They're upright. We've got this murkiness to the water. Now this could be leaching from the sand. It could be ammonia spikes causing bacterial blooms or something, I don't know. <laughs> a lot of the plants at the back you see were already in another uh, tank, which means they would have had beneficial bacteria on them. This could be the die off. We just don't know. I need to test the water though and just make sure we're not leaching any ammonia or anything like that. I wouldn't expect to see anything spiking at this stage. There's not even any livestock in there, is it? So here I've got my fresh water test kit from API, not sponsored video or anything, but I think if you want to keep fish or shrimp, you have to have a test kit. So I'm gonna take a sample and test for ammonia and nitrite. That's the main things. I mean, I, screw it, I might as well do nitrate as well. Right, we'll do the ammonia first. Right, test done. We're basically showing no ammonia. I mean, I know it looks like it is on camera. Um, I've found that they, it never looks that yellow. <laughs> Maybe there's a slight, the very slightest amount of ammonia in there. It doesn't matter, we're gonna do a water change anyway. Um, there's no nitrite as you'd expect. The nitrate level is probably set about 10, between five and 10 I'd say, which is good. We want a little bit of nitrate in there. That's what helps the plants grow. But yeah, to get rid of this mistiness, just do a nice quick water change and it'll also take out any sort of ammonia that was leaching as well. So there we go, back to being completely fresh again. And now it's time to add our floating plants, but not duckweed. <laughs> <laughs> now don't get me wrong, there's nothing bad about duckweed, it just can get everywhere and just, yeah, no thank you, it's just way too much, it multiplies way too fast for me. So instead I'm going with what I used on this tank, which is Salvinia. Now this is another eco tank that I set up, um, but the thing is when I set this one up I used old aquasoil, that was my mistake, so there's not a huge amount of nutrients available for the plants and that's why some of them are now starting to show some deficiencies. Now we can counteract that by sticking in a load of root tabs, kind of just doing a grid pattern over everything, but it's not really my style to do that. You know, Once you've learned something it's time to tear it down, start again and learn from your mistakes. And next time I won't be using aquasoil that's more than like six months old to be honest because yeah, it's just, it just doesn't look great. I mean, the, don't get me wrong, the pearl weed looks great, but then that doesn't require a lot of nutrients, to be honest, it just grows so easy. But look, Limnophila, easy to plant to grow. It's looking drab, Rotala rotundifolia as well. And um, there's plenty of light in there for those, so it's, it's gotta be a nutrient deficiency. I've been dosing the water column, but it's still not enough. Anyway, what I wanna use is this here. This is uh, Salvinia, really good plant. It grows fast, it covers the area, but if you pick it up, look, it comes up as a big group, so it's so easy just to be able to clean the top of the tank or take a load out to make space for new ones to grow. And then over here on this tank, my rare fish aquarium, I've uh, got some red root floaters in the top, which are doing so, so well. Look at how red they look, even under the water. I mean, the, the light that we're using, which is the Chihiros WRGB2, really does make all the reds pop. Like, look at the fish. I did a full video on this uh, light because it's one I've just recently got, but yeah. <laughs> Let's get some of those red root floaters as well. Right, here we go, I've got some nice ones. Now we don't want too many, but we need enough. Some of them are bad, then just pick them off. If they're bad, they won't repair, so just get rid of them. It's not like it's gonna take long for them to grow back. <laughs> some more over here. And these will all have beneficial bacteria on them as well, so we might get another bloom, but if we just leave it, over a few days it'll balance out, and it should be good within a week, to be honest more over this side. 
bit more on the back. There we go. Like, it instantly does actually transform the tank into looking a lot more nature-y. Do you know what I mean by that? I don't know, it just looks more like if I come in close, look at that, a little bit of slow movement. It's like we're underwater, isn't it? And I've also picked out the red root floaters up here. So look at those, they're so red. They're gonna look good as well. Again, just place them in anywhere. They'll find their own little spot, to be honest. Stick them like left and right. They should look really good then. <laughs> oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And I also find the red root floaters do really well under this light, to be honest. I don't know why it's such a cheap budget light, but they just do. I guess it's the closeness to them. Uh, plus we've got that soil that'll be releasing sort of iron and that into the water column. Even though it's not like, it doesn't look like it's directly leaching. There's, there's like the water goes through it and comes back out again in a sense. So everything's being shared. But so far, so good on this tank. So it's a new day. I've just tested the tank again. Everything's good, no ammonia. Everything's where it needs to be. We can put the fish in now. So I actually want to make this a tank for my lamp eyes that I've currently got in this one here, which needs refreshing and needs redoing. Uh, plants are super healthy, so I'm going to reuse a lot of them in other skates, but just want to start it again. We've got lamp eyes in there. We've also got dwarf golden barbs as well, if you can catch them. There we go. Come out, come and have a look. Really cute fish. But what I'm thinking I can do here is have a different species in each tank. So, so I've got a feeling that this is going to work so well. Just by how good it's gone in the first few days, I can sort of feel like it's sort of feel like, you know, I just got the impression it's going to go great. And what I'd actually like to do is just do one massive rack of complete Wallstad style tanks, you know, no filter tanks and have a different species just thriving in each one. So I'd like to redo this one as well. Oh, I don't know, actually it looks very cool, didn't it? I mean, there's no real need to, to redo it, I guess, um, except for if you just want to freshen up and go for a new challenge, which I normally always do. But yeah, the Axel Rod Rasmora's in there. They've thrived in here, they've done so well. They're not scared, they used to be hiding all the time. They're never hiding now, but that's probably because they feel just like they're in some real safe environment because there's so much cover everywhere. They can just dart away whenever they want, so they're always out. Now, of course, above those two, we have got a shrimp tank, so that's completely not with the theme, but I can move that over to the other side of the studio where I'm gonna be doing some shrimp videos soon. That's all coming up, but <laughs> make sure you subscribe for what's coming, We've got some cool stuff coming. But yeah, I, th I think we're definitely just gonna go with the one species in here and maybe a couple of other little feature fish as well, but um, start with just the lamp eyes. So initially I thought it was gonna be really, really difficult to catch the lamp eyes. I got my jug ready, put my net in and just took a swipe and straight away I caught four in one go. This was going brilliantly and I thought it was gonna be really, really easy. I was wrong. <laughs> okay, so um, <laughs> catching the fish wasn't e as easy as I first thought, but I've got them all now. I've actually just got all of them because they're all tiny, and I just thought it's more interesting to have a few different varieties than just one type of fish. And there's not that many there, so that's the perfect amount really for a starting tank. When you first set up your tank, you don't want to go chucking in a load of fish because the bio load would be too high and you'll get a spike in ammonia because the bacteria can't generate as fast as the waste is being produced. But with this small amount of fish in this big area, it's gonna be absolutely fine, especially with all these plants. So let's get them in. Now the temperatures are matched, of course, because I heat the room and not the tanks, so they're safe to go straight in. Everything's matching, there we go. <laughs> awesome. Oh, that's just enough as well, perfect. So for the next week at least, or until I stop seeing any signs of ammonia and nitrite, I'll be testing the water every single day. This is important because there's no filter, remember? So the whole tank itself is a filter, and this means it will take time to generate enough beneficial bacteria to combat the effects of the poop from the fish. Now I'll hold off from feeding the fish for a couple of days as well, just to make sure we aren't getting even more waste put in the tank. Any uneaten food will just cause even more of an ammonia spike. I want to really be able to tell what's going on in the tank without doing that. Day three, I'll give them a little feed and they'll be absolutely fine with that. Come day six though, it's all going to be absolutely perfect. When you've got this many plants in a tank, you really can't go wrong, unless I had big, big fish in there and way too many of them. But this is the reason why I love nanofish, because you can put a good little group in that creates a ton of interest 
but the bio load is actually really small. Now a really common question I get is about cleaning the tank. So many people ask me, how do I vac it? You know, how do I gravel vac and that kind of thing? Well, I have never gravel vac'd any of my tanks. It's just not necessary in planted aquariums. All the waste that's being generated and the mulm and things like that, it's supposed to work its way down into the soil. It becomes food for the plants. Gravel vacuuming in this kind of tank would be a disaster. It would just put the soil all around the tank and then there'd just be an algae fest. Now, the only maintenance that's gonna be required on this tank is to clean the glass every now and again with a scraper, trim the plants back, which are gonna be growing crazy, and to start with the water changes. But again, after a week or two, you're not gonna even need to do water changes, just water top ups. The ecosystem will be set in and it will be going so well. So again, if you've enjoyed this video guys, don't forget to not like, not subscribe and not ding that bell because there's nothing else interesting coming. This was it, nothing else good from me, bye.